before the falls appeared in the Himalayas in Karakuram, and before the winter climbing became their hallmark in the world, all the eight thousanders had already been won. People stood on them between 1950 and 1964, just when travelling abroad was only a dream in Poland. Poles had to find another idea for the Himalayas. The Slovians, who were in a similar situation, focused on overcoming huge and technically difficult Himalayan walls. Andrzej Zawada, a legendary forerunner of Polish expedition of the 1980s, decided to lead Polish climbers to the Himalayan summits during the most demanding season of the year. Tell me what you did in the winter in the Tatras and I'll tell you who you are, he used to say. In 1973, an expedition led by Andrzej Zawada made the first winter ascent of Noshak in the Afghan Hindu Kush. Tadeusz Petrovsky and Zawada reached the summit. It was the first winter ascent of a 7,000 meters mountain. From that moment, Zawada consistently pursued winter exploration of the Himalayas especially the winter ascent of Mount Everest. In 1974, the winter ascent of Lutze failed, but the altitude then reached by Zawada and Zygmunt Heinrich was promising and allowed them to realistically think about climbing Mount Everest. More experience was gained and the area was explored. In March 1979, the Nepalese authorities allowed the Polish expedition to attempt the southern failure of Everest the following year before the monsoon. However, it was a secondary goal for Andrzej Zawada. He continued to seek approval for winter activity on Everest. The problem was a formal and diplomatic nature. The Nepalese authorities recognized only two seasons pre-monsoon and forced monsoon. They had to be convinced that winter climbing in the Himalayas is possible and with good physical and equipment preparation not more dangerous, both for the mountaineers and the Nepalese staff working for the expedition. For this purpose, already in November 1977, Andrzej Zawada flew to Kathmandu. The ground for talks at the Ministry of Tourism was prepared by the head of the Polish diplomatic mission in Nepal. It didn't work right away. The Nepalese delayed, first issuing permission for the spring season. Finally, on November 22, 1979, a decision favorable to falls was made. The winter season was open in the Himalayas of Nepal and the Polish expedition was the first to receive permission to attempt Mount Everest. The permit was for the classic route from the south side between December 1, 1979 and February 28, 1980. The Ministry of Tourism of Nepal asked for the campaign to be carried out only until February 15 and the remaining two weeks of the format to be used for the liquidation of the camps and the return Kerava. The arrival of the winter format was a great challenge for the fools, not only in terms of sports but also organizational. Fortunately, money was found for fast air transport which saved the expedition. However, a fresh month out of a three-month permit was wasted. It was not until January 4, 1980 that all the participants of the expedition and all their luggage found themselves in the base game. The expedition consisted of 20 climbers led by Andrzej Zawada. In addition, there were five surfers led by Sirdar Pemba Nurbu. While the base camp was expanding, some of the climbers were already climbing the Kumbu Ice Fall, a gigantic cascade of ice cracks and deep crevices. 
it had already claimed many lives. So it was of the utmost importance to carefully prepare the route and correct it frequently, as the ice pole was constantly flowing and changing its shape. On January 8, at the beginning of the Western Coom, the tents of Camp 1 were erected under the slopes of Napsi, and the next day, a team of six people led by Richard Shafirsky set up Camp 2 deep inside the Coom. Such rapid progress was made possible by good weather and light wind. However, only one day after the establishment of Camp 2, Strong gusts destroyed one of the tents of Camp 2. The action of developing the network of camps was slowed down. But the movement of lords through ice pole continued, with the help of a five-man Sherpa team. On January 15, Machai Faulikovsky and Shishtab Zurich set up Camp 3 in the Lourdes face at an altitude of 7,150 meters. During this ascent, it turned out that the Lourdes face is one glass mountain. Winter winds have stripped the slopes of snow, exposing living eyes. At the same time, in the second half of January, weather conditions deteriorated significantly. Frost and hurricane winds intensified. The expedition lost almost a month to cover a distance of 850 meters separating Camp 3 from the South Goal. And during the many attempts, half of the team was out of action. On January 23, the attempt of Lashak Chira, Zygmunt Heinrich, Jansuls, and Shishtap Wileski failed. Two days later, another attempt to reach the coal was made by Machai Faulikovsky and Shishtab Zurich. A gust of wind literally left at Zurich climbing up the roofs into the air and then threw him down 20 meters to the nearest hook. Zurich was badly injured, but he managed to retreat to Camp 3 on his own. From here, he was helped by his colleagues and further descent to the base camp, but he fell into the cracks twice on the way down. His condition did not allow for further participation in the expedition. He had to leave the base camp and return to Poland. Finally, on February 11, around 4 p.m., Lashak Chira, Valente Fiut, and Shishtaf Wileski reached the South Coal. A monstrous gale was blowing across the saddle of the coal. Feud and Wileski spent a hard night on the coal, while Chira dropped his load and retreated to Camp 3. Doubt began to creep into the ranks of the participants of the expedition. Andrei Zavada was afraid that the expedition was slipping out of his hands. On 13 February, he and Richard Shafirsky in a heroic attempt climb up to the South Coal, where they spent the night. Zawada was exhausted, but his bravery encouraged young climbers. The descent was dramatic. Shafirsky, who was in good shape, was walking fast and during the day, he reached Camp 3, where Lashak Chira and Wileski were already there. Zawada was way behind and lost his way. He bivouacked at 7,600 meters. He was trembling with cold and began the long wait for the dawn. At great personal risk and despite being tired from the approach from Camp 2, Chira and Wileski rushed to the rescue. At about 2 a.m. in the night, they reached Zawada, gave him hard soup and rubbed him until he felt warm again. They all then got back to Camp 3. 
The next day, Chira and Vileski were unable to set up for the South Call. They were a day late. It was the last team and the last chance. According to the Ministry of Tourism of Nepal, February 15 was to be the last day of upward campaign. Zawada asked for the expedition to be released from these arrangements. Ali is an officer was sent to extend the format. Nepalese authorities extended the format only for two days of action off. On February 16th, Lashak Chira and Wileski reached the South Coal. The night was extremely cool with minus 42 degrees centigrade and strong wind. February 17 was the day of the last chance for the expedition. They set up at 6.45 am in the morning when the first rays of the sun reached the South Coal. They took with them only one cylinder of oxygen which could only last for five hours of climbing. They followed a slightly more difficult but shorter variant of route, leading to the proper southern ridge of Everest at an altitude of 8,400 meters. Further to the south summit, they climbed the Tibetan side of the ridge, sheltered from the wind. The Hillary step did not cause them much difficulty. They passed more snow humps on the overhanging ridge. At 2.25 pm, finally they reached the summit. They embraced each other, dropped their fags, and disconnected their oxygen tanks. They left there a small cross and a rosary blessed by the fourth John Fall II. Lashik Chira took small rocks from the summit along with a piece of paper with an advertisement for a good time called Fair Trucker 274 2602 Anchorage, Alaska, USA. This card was left by Regenet, who reached the summit with Hanalor Schmitz in October 1979. Both died on the descent. The descent was more strenuous and dangerous than ascent. They were exhausted and an any mistake could lead to fatal consequences. Mileski's toes were frostbitten and he was moving very slowly. They did not have flashlights. Lashek Chira reached the tent on the south coal first and waited for Mileski. An hour later he arrived there. They spent a night rescuing Mileski's toes. Next day, the two descended to Camp 3 where they met other members of the expedition. They were back in the base camp on 19 February. The atmosphere in base camp couldn't have been better. Everybody knew that each of them played an important part in the success. News about their success soon reached Poland through the radio station and base camp. The first winter ascent of Mount Everest by Andrzej Zawada's team was also the first successful winter expedition to any of the peaks above 8,000 meters. After this success, the golden age of foolish Himalayan mountaineering started. Out of the 14 8,000 meters mountains, they made the first winter ascent up 9 in the 1980s. In 1989, Erzak Kokochka, one of the greatest alpinists of all times, died on the south base of Lutsi. His death set the end of the golden age of foolish Himalayan climbing. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more such content to come in the future.